everybody, Mackenzie here at the Jackson Library, and I'm gonna show you the craft for tweens and teens, which are grades fifth through 12, that we have available for February at all three libraries. So you can pick one up in Jackson, Lakefield, or Heron Lake. Just give us a call, and I will have those numbers at the end of this tutorial, just in case you don't know how to get in touch with us. These kits are completely free, and what you get in them is a bag of air dry clay, two little pots of paint, a paintbrush, and a couple of toothpicks. And with this random stuff, you are gonna be making a narwhal phone holder. So your phone sets right in there and it just holds it for you. So you can watch a video, listen to some music, and it'll just hold your little phone for you. So that is what we are going to make. And the first thing you wanna do is get ready for your workstation here. So I've got it covered with some newspaper. You can grab anything you want um, just to cover your workstation because air dry clay can get a little bit messy. So you wanna keep it clean, keep the cleanup easy. So you wanna just make sure it is all covered. Then another thing you can do is you can put on some lotion, which I did just before I started this video. That helps keep your hands a little bit cleaner when you're working with the clay. So it just helps you out a bit. Then you wanna grab some paper towels and get them wet, because we are gonna use these later and just have them off to the side so you're ready to use them when we need to. That's gonna help us smooth out our clay later on. So you can grab your clay out of the bag and there's a, a sizable bit in there and you're just gonna kind of work it for a little bit to make sure it's nice and soft and movable here. And so I'm just gonna work it for a little bit, make sure it's movable. Okay. It's doing pretty good for me. So then I'm gonna take off a little bit that we'll use later on for the horn. So I'm just gonna take off something that's about grape size. So it doesn't have to be too much. And I'm just gonna set that aside. Then I'm gonna work on making this whole head part and then I'll have a space or I'll have some set aside for the, the tail. But the head part is nice to get done first. We need it nice and big. We sort of a flat back there so our phones can have something nice and solid to rest on. So if I want it to be, it's sort of like, like a big clementine size is about what we're going for. A little bit bigger than that. And I'm not gonna worry too much about making the clay super smooth at this part. I'm just shaping it. So you can see I've got a nice bulbous head there. Can smooth it out a little. Got that. But that's where those paper towels will really come in is smoothing everything out. So there, I think I've got that part done. I've got a little bit more clay than I need here. Let me take some off. Okay, so there's the head. Now I wanna work on making my tail. So it looks like I can maybe do a little bit more. So this part is where your phone is actually gonna rest. So you're gonna want that nice and smooth. And still got some more than I need. Okay. So I wanna have a little tail that comes up here. And then smooth that and kind of pinch it in. So you can see he gets narrower at the tail. And then I want to give him a little fluke there in his tail. Okay. Now I want to try and get that shape. So you just kind of pinch down in the middle. So there it's starting to make the shape. Pinching. And then you just easily move it. You can see this air dry clay is super easy to work and move around to what you want it to be. So I want it in and then to go out. 
nice little point. Okay. So there I've got my tail. Make sure this area in between is fairly flat here. And I've got a nice big head for my phone to rest on. So I'm just making this tail a little bit more what I want it to be here. Okay, and you can see that gap is definitely big enough for my phone. That's another thing you wanna make sure you've got figured out there. And thinking I've got my shape about done there. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab those wet paper towels and I'm gonna use this water to help smooth and seal everything. So it's gonna go all over this. And I'll start taking away those little cracks that you might have seen in there, all my fingerprints. That'll just smooth everything out. So you get in the middle there and get that all nice and smooth. And so the nice thing about air dry clay is right in the name, it dries to a nice hard surface just by sitting out in the air. So you don't have to put it in an oven, nothing like that to get a nice hard clay object. So once we get all done, you're actually gonna have to just set it aside and leave it set aside for at least overnight. You might even wanna leave it for a little bit more so it gets completely dried out. So I'm just working some of this moisture in here. And I've got some cracks on the bottom, so I'm just working that through. That's where you want this newspaper underneath because this can get pretty messy. You can see my hands are kind of a mess as I'm working all of this. my whole narwhal shape is pretty well smoothed out. Now we'll divot over there. Okay, so there he is ready to be set aside. And what you're going to want to do while it's drying is you would want to have it sitting up against like a wall or maybe the side of a shelf, something like that, so this tail doesn't fall. So if you wanna make it like mine and make it a narwhal, we need to do one more step. So that's where our toothpicks come in and that little bit of clay we set aside. Now, if you just want it to be a whale, like a, like a blue whale, something like that, you can just leave it at this stage and you don't have to worry about the narwhal horn. But I'm gonna make ours a fun little narwhal. So I'm gonna use this little extra clay and I'm going to Put it on a toothpick. So I want it to stick out here. I'm gonna put my toothpick in. And there I want it to be around that size. So I might not need all this clay, but we're gonna start with it. And I'm going to roll it so it starts, so it's skinny on this end and thicker on this end. So I'm just gonna roll that. Okay, 
like I said, I can already see. I'm probably not going to need all of this. I'm just going to roll that. And you just put more pressure on this end, roll that one a little bit more. So it's smaller than this thicker edge. Okay. Now I'm gonna start and I'm gonna wrap it around my toothpick. So I'm just gonna spiral it around. And this kind of gives it some of those ridges, which we're gonna add water and smooth stuff out. So you're probably gonna lose some of that definition, but we'll put it back in with our other toothpick that we've got here. So there you can see I've made it to the end of my toothpick. So I'm just gonna kind of pinch that off, make that a little horn. Got my little narwhal horn. So you can't, you might not be able to see, but it's pretty cracked because I was stretching that clay. And I need to make sure it's nice and adhered to the body. So you're gonna use that water to really mesh it with the body of the narwhal. You can use that, and then you're just gonna smooth out those sides. So I'm just getting it all smooth in there. Okay, so mine still is doing pretty good with those lines, but if you wanted, you could then use a toothpick and just kind of redefine those ridges that are in there if they got lost by using that water. And just add those back in. Okay, there it is. So then you wanna just find your spot and you probably want to use a little bit of newspaper underneath it again, just so it doesn't um, make a mark on if you have it on a counter or something like that. Like I said, just rest it against a wall or a side of a shelf and it'll keep it held up. And then leave it completely alone overnight, maybe a little bit longer so it can dry out. And then we'll move on to painting it so you have a cute little narwhal foam holder. Have fun! <laughs> everyone, Mackenzie back here. You have let your narwhal dry overnight. So we are ready to move on to the painting. If you let it dry a little bit more, that's all good. You just wanna make sure it at least dries overnight so it's nice and solid for us. So now we add the paint so it looks like this little guy here. What you wanna do before you get started is cover your workstation again so you don't get too messy and your cleanup is really nice and easy. Grab some sort of glass that you can put water in to clean your paintbrush. So you don't want it to be a really nice glass. You just want something easy that can hold water that you can paint, clean your paintbrush in. And of course, out of your kit, you want to grab your paintbrush. If you have your own paintbrushes you want to use, grab those. You want to grab a pencil and then get out your two containers of paint. You'll have one of white paint and one of blue paint. So we're going to be mixing these colors to make all the different levels of blue that you see here. And then finally, you're gonna want something to mix your paint colors on. So you could grab a paper plate or something. Right here I've got a little plastic paint tray. So if you have one of those, those are great to use. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the, the main body blue, which is kind of a medium blue here. And I need the most of that color. But before I start painting, I want to mark out that line. So I have something to kind of follow and mark out his little fins there on the side. So I'm going to mark that out quick with my pencil. So I'm just going to start a line here. And here I'm in midway, so I'm going to draw his little fins. And this will just give me a guide. So when I'm painting it, I am just making sure we have some light color on the bottom of everything. So the back of his tail, the bottom side of his tail will be light colored and everything. So I'm just giving myself a guide that I can then use when I am painting. So then I don't have to really think about where I'm painting. And if you're good at freehanding painting, you can skip this step. 
I like to make it simple for myself. So I have something just easy to follow as I go. So here, I'll do that again. And let's see, try and match these up. So those fins are around the same side. So grab, just drawing that little triangle of his fin there. And then we keep going. There we go. So I've got that marked out. And now I can mix my paint. So I want more blue than white on this one. So we're just going for a medium blue. I'm gonna pour some blue in. And I want a good amount of paint because this is a pretty big section. I'm gonna add a little bit of white. A glob of white there. Okay. Now I'm gonna wet my paintbrush. And if you want, you could go ahead and you could mix all of your different levels of blue right now, because we've got a medium blue. And then for the spots, it's just the straight blue. So you're gonna wanna keep some that is just blue behind. And then we get a really light blue, so that's more white, and then just a tiny bit of blue in there. And then you're gonna use just straight white on the horn, so you'll need to keep some white left in your container, so you can do that. And it's not an exact science, as you can see, I kind of overfilled my little thing here, but you just keep mixing and mixing, and you'll start getting a nice color blend here. And you're better mixing a little more than you need than trying to match your exact mix of blue later on. Well, this is where a paper plate is kind of nice because it doesn't matter if you overwhelm your little well. But there, that's pretty good. I am gonna clean off my brush so I can get all this big glob off. Go grab my paper towel. Okay. Let's see, I got that all in there. Just gonna wash this off so I don't have a big paint glob on there right when I start. There we go. And this paint spreads a little better if your paintbrush is wet when you're using it. So I'm gonna add my paint. And you wanna be careful when you're going around the horn there because we are gonna paint that white. And you might need to do a couple coats with this. So there's gonna be some weighting in this part. You might wanna just paint, leave it to dry, go do something else and come back to it. There. And see, this is where it's handy to have that line. because so that's what I just get to paint towards. So this is my medium blue. And if you wanna paint yours just one blue, go ahead. Just gives the narwhal a little dimension. Makes him extra cute here. Narwhals in real life are more of a silvery gray color, but they do have those spots. So we're giving it a little bit of narwhal flavor, even though we're using a different color than what they look like in real life. They're usually like a nice bright silver on top. And then they have some black spots and a whiter, lighter colored underbelly. So we're taking definite inspiration from the real animal. And if you don't know what a narwhal looks like, you should look them up because they are 
pretty cool whales. Okay. Get them there. It is being done. And then the next part we'll do is we'll mix up and we'll do our really light blue so we can get the top and the bottom. Like I said, if you're not satisfied with just the one coat, feel free to do multiple coats so you get a really nice, good coverage. Yeah, I'm just trying to follow my line that I drew on there. And if you get really creative with the painting, I'd love to see it. You can share it with us on Facebook. We're also on Instagram at Jackson Co. Reads. So you can share your pictures and tag us there too so we can see your creative painting of your little narwhal. done with this first coat. Okay, so there I made sure I've got coverage everywhere. And mine I can see is poking through, so I'll probably do a second coat just to make sure it's a nice solid blue to use as our base. And it doesn't take that long for this thin coat of paint to dry. I'm already going. But once you get this part done, you can then go on and we will mix, after this dries, we'll mix and apply our light blue for the belly of our narwhal. All right, see you back here in just a bit. Okay, and we're back. I left this to dry, so it's a nice solid blue. And I did do two coats to make sure it was nice and thick. So there's no white showing through. Now I'm gonna do the underbelly part. So that I want to be a really nice light blue. So I'm gonna use mostly white with a little bit of blue. So again, you're gonna use whatever you have for mixing, whether that's a paper plate or a little paint thing like this. And so we want mostly white. And make sure you do leave some white in your container though, because you're gonna use that um, just plain white on the horn of your narwhal. So we've got that, and then I need to add a little bit of blue. Okay, we'll start with that. I'm gonna mix it all together. And this is a really dark blue, so you don't need much. And if I don't like it, I can always add some more blue. It's a lot easier to add more blue here. So I wanna make sure I have enough white to cover that horn later on. So this looks a little bit too light. So I'm gonna add some more blue in there. And this, you'll just keep going until you're happy with your color. And again, you do want to make sure you have just plain blue left over too, because we'll use that for our spots. Because like I said, real narwhals often have spots along their back. So it helps us make it look more like a narwhal, even though we're giving them a bright blue color, which isn't what they normally have. Okay, now I'm happy with that blue. 
looks nice next to that one. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and clean off my paintbrush. There it is. It's nice and mixed. So I'm gonna put it in my water. Clean it off here. Okay, so now I need to paint my underbelly. And again, you might need two coats, especially with this lighter color here. And you're gonna wanna be especially careful around his little fins. And he's got on the side there, those little triangle fins. You'll wanna be careful when you're painting around those. But I am going to, now I got my paint mixed, I'm gonna pause and turn it into super fast mode here so you don't have to watch me paint the bottom. So we'll be back once I get this bottom painted. Now we are on to our last little bit of painting that we need to do. So I got a new glass of water. Since I'm gonna be using the white paint, I didn't want it to be tinged with some blue water there. So I'm going to paint the white of the horn here first. So I'm just gonna use my pure white for that one. And if you like the sort of natural color of the clay, you can always skip the painting here. But I'm gonna make it a bright white one. And you're gonna wanna be careful again when you're going near that blue. And you can cover that. And if you got some blue on your horn, this is a good time. You can kind of cover it up with this white paint. And make it all nice and then after this we'll use the blue to put some dots on and then there will be just one last little step and that is going to be drawing on your eyes and mouth so as you can see i just had to be careful at the bottom and then you can go pretty fast with the rest of the horn and you might want to do two coats again just make sure it's nice and covered. And if you've noticed any other spots on yours that isn't covered as well as you want with the other colors of blue, you've still got your blue that you can go in and you can kind of cover that all up. Your hands getting it all painted white real quick. And I'm starting with the white instead of the dark blue dots at this point because I don't want that in my water to make it all blue and mess up the nice bright white. Okay, so horn is painted. I'm going to rinse off this white paint and for the dots I'm just going to use the pure blue color that we've got going. So I'm going to kind of make sure my paintbrush here is at a point. Dip it into my blue. and just do some dots along the top side here, because that's usually where narwhals have their, their spots on them, is all along the top side there. And you can just paint some polka dots, different sizes. Do as many as you want, just a nice random pattern of some dots here. And then once you've got this all painted, you're gonna to wanna to go and grab a black marker. So if you've got a Sharpie, that works great. And you're gonna want a fine line one. So we're gonna use that and just draw on the eyes and the mouth. So we're getting real close to being done. I know this takes a little bit longer because you have to wait for the paint to dry. So I'm just getting those dots all on there. And it's just a, a random pattern. 
try and make it look good. And yeah, I'm getting some on the underside and in between where the tail is. call that good on our polka dots. So you're going to want to make sure that this is all nice and dry before you go ahead and put your phone in there. You don't want any paint on your phone. I saw I got a little white on my our wall, so I'm just going to cover that back up. There we go. Fix that little issue. So now you can go grab a marker and you're gonna draw on a face for your narwhal, and then he's all done. Okay, so I got my black Sharpie here, so it's a fine line one. That's what you're gonna wanna use, some sort of marker like this to just draw on your eyes and mouth to make him a happy little narwhal. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna draw him on the side. It's just a plain black circle. If you want to draw cuter little cartoon eyes, I'd love to see what you draw on there. So I just drew little circle eyes and I try to make it somewhat even here. Okay, then we need a little mouth across there, make him smile. And so you're gonna have it end kind of where your eye is. So, let's see if you can see here. So this is where we're going to have our little smile start right around the eye. And then it'll go straight across. And then he'll end where that eye is. So I'm just gonna keep it a little bit further. And there we go. I have a happy little narwhal phone holder. And I hope you guys had fun making this. If you haven't gotten a kit yet, you can get one at any of the three libraries. Uh, you can call Jackson at 847-4748, Lakefield at 662-5782, or Heron Lake at 793-2641. And you can reserve your kit and then you can pick it up in a curbside or an appointment, whatever the library has available for you. And then you can make your very own little narwhal phone holder. And like I said at the very beginning, these are completely free. We hope you just have fun doing a little crafting. All right, see you next time. Oh.